One, two, three, four, let's go. It's hardly. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I heard be Alaska. It's hardly. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Jeannie's show. It's the alley. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Today we present one of my dream stories. It's a story of whaling in Barrow, Alaska. We've all heard of it. People that go out on the ice in these umiaks and capture whales, big huge bowhead whales. Heartbeat Alaska was there this past whaling season. And we witnessed not only the capturing of a whale, but people working together as they have for centuries. It's a wonderful show. Thank you for joining me. And I'll be back with Barrow, Alaska, right after this. Hello from the amenities of Barrow, Alaska. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> Heartbeat Alaska is pleased to announce a brand new official hotel. We're brought to you now by Millennium Alaskan Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And... Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. We head out now to the icy shores of the Chukchi Sea, where residents of Barrow, Alaska are pulling in a 60-ton whale. Welcome to Kupik Mobile. We're up over here. We're up to pull it up. It's Sunday morning, June 1st at 11 a.m. in Barrow, Alaska. VHF signals carry the urgent message from a whaling crew out on the ice. We need help over here. We need help to pull it up. Come on. Thank you. Ready to do it. Straight down from UIT parent office? And four, and four. I need to get out. We need help. We need lots of help. Okay, we got two guys heading down there and also... Like also cell phones in a city, residents here in Barrow rely upon the VHF as a source of communication. By now, half the town knows that one of the whaling captains has caught a whale and needs as many hands as possible to help pull it up on the ice. The whaling crew's flag has been perched on the tallest piece of ice signifying a successful hunt and marking the location of the harvest site. As soon as news hits town, a smaller flag is put on the rooftop of the captain's house, letting all those in town know that a whale has been caught and whose crew caught it. One by one, people show up at the site on snow machines and by whatever means necessary, ready to work and work hard. Go! The whale. A 56-foot female bowhead whale will take a while to get up on the ice and even longer to butcher. Captain of the crew, Henry Kignick, has his work cut out for him. Henry will have to determine how this whale will be brought up on the ice, especially with as few people as there are present. A 
another block and tackle is hooked up. This should make pulling the whale up on the ice a little easier. The bowhead whale can often weigh in excess of 60 tons, and that requires a sturdy piece of ice that will support that much weight. Fortunately, the captain has chosen a sturdy piece of ice. It's now just a battle of physically getting the whale up on the ice. Snow machines are added to the mix, along with a few new recruits. Inch by inch, the whale slowly comes out of the icy waters. Keep in mind that what's showing at the present is only about a quarter of the whale. They keep us busy all night. You've seen it out there, he was. They never stop. Sometimes they get tired, you know it. It's a lot of work. Sometimes they take a nap out there when they get a little too tired, you know. It, it get to you, but you know, you gotta be strong to, to do the job. You gotta finish the job. And no matter what we do, I have to thank the Lord for giving us strength. Our provider always provides what we need the most. And we share with the people. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Northland. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. What do you get when you combine a banker with a ball player? Play ball! A big hit for your community. These two teamed up to hit a home run when he got his bank to work with a community coalition and other groups in the area to improve the athletic fields. And she got all the kids to participate. Because together they knew if the kids were playing ball, they wouldn't be playing with drugs. Visit HelpYourCommunity.org to see what your group can do. Because you get more. When you get together! It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Welcome one, welcome all. The decision has been made to start cutting up the beach part of the bowhead, harvesting what's available and lightening their load for their next attempt at pulling the whale up on the ice. The whale skin and blubber, or muktuk, as it's known in the Inupak language, are cut into long, strip-like portions that are easy to carry, or should I say drag. Long hooks are inserted into the muktuk, allowing the hookers to pull on the muktuk so that cutting the blubber away from the body of the whale can be done much easier. In this case, 
there is only enough room on the ice for a couple of cutters. The whale will need to be pulled up further on the ice before several cutters can participate. That way. When the muktuk is cut away from the whale, it is dragged to a different part of the ice where others load it into sleds to be hauled to the shore. As you can see, it takes the cooperation of many to make such a feat possible. Many of the people here today are from Barrow's different whaling crews or members of the captain's family. Others are residents who have chosen to take time away from their busy lives to help Henry and his crew. Regardless of their relations, each one of these people will be rewarded for their hard work with a share of muktuk and meat. <laughs> It takes so much patience, hard work, and dedication to take part in the harvest of a whale that just getting the task done is reason to celebrate, and so they do. When a crew catches their first whale, it's divided amongst all the 51 whaling crews of Barrow. The whaling captain gets his portion, and then each crew in Barrow gets a portion of that whale. All those who help with the harvest get a portion of the whale, and yet another portion goes to serving the community in what is known as Nagikai. Unalik means come on over and have some fresh muktak. That's how I learned it, and that's how they still refer to it today. Unalik Nagikai is just one of the feasts they celebrate during whaling season. Another feast is known as the Eskimo picnic or Upawalti. It's a tradition that we follow through and bring in the whaling boat on shore after a successful season and we put out a little feed for the community members, whoever comes down. We uh, serve them our delicacy, our mikiyak. And it's, it's an event that occurs during this time of the year, this time of the season after a successful hunt. The men coming back on shore. From a mile away, the crew pushes their flag bearing umiak from the icy waters of the Chukchi Sea to the shore where they are greeted by their community. prayer has been given, Mikiak is served to those who brave the wind and cold to be part of this joyous occasion. Hi, my name is Rebecca Barra. I'd like you to, I'd like to welcome you to Barrow. Here's the first apalante, and this is what you call Mikiak. It's muktuk and meat cut up and rendered. So, very delicious. Very delicious. Very. So I'm serving my second round here. Oh. Second round. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm Mikiya. Thank you. Alaska. This is bow's head part, the blubber, and some meat. Right here. And we call it fermented, fermented whale. Big yeah. When the muktuk and meat are harvested, much of it is placed in buckets and soaked in the blood of the whale. 
It is stirred two to three times a day for a week or more until the meat and muk duck have become fermented. It is considered a delicacy and is extremely popular amongst the Anubak people. It is just a country eating Mickey up. He's out, active. One of these guys. Yeah, one of these kind. He's all active. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. This Apawauti is being held in honor of Harry Broward Jr. and his crew, the little Kupak crew, who have already caught the whale for the season. For Harry, it's time to retire the umiak and start getting ready for Nulakatak, the blanket toss, which is another celebration these people have during the summer. One, easy, two, three, go! Coming together for a feast is the way Anukbak people celebrate life, a reminder to be thankful for what they have and appreciate what they have been taught by their elders about life in the frozen land. Ukbiavit. From the moment you enter the doorway at the Millennium Hotel, another world surrounds you. It's a world of friendly faces and cordial service. It's a place of great taste and great tastes. The Millennium Hotel is a haven of relaxation and personal restoration, of attentive service and attention to details. But at the end of the day, we won't read you a bedtime story. Although, would you be surprised if we did? If you visit Barrow in the summertime, it can be hard to sleep with that 24-hour sunshine. So, the King Eider, Barrow's newest hotel, does everything to make your stay quiet, relaxing, and worry-free. Don't worry about a cab. The King Eider is a short walk from the airport. Need to get around town? No problem. The King Eider rents cars. Want a room with a kitchenette? The King Eider's got them. Smoke-free, alcohol-free, it's the hotel so clean, they ask you to take your shoes off when you come in the door. The King Eider Inn, Barrow, Alaska. It's the alley. Welcome back. Butchering a whale. It's an event that takes place a few times every year in Barrow, Alaska. It's an event that demonstrates the same thing that these very people and their ancestors have done for thousands of years. It's an event that brings a community together. It not only fills up the freezer, but it carries on a tradition of working together. the most northern community in the United States. Although this Alaskan community sits at the top of the state, it has come to be known as the top of the world. To the indigenous people who have dwelled here since time immemorial, the area is known as Ukbiavik. The place where owls are hunted. To the rest of the world, the area is known as Barrow, named after Sir John Barrow, the second secretary of the British Admiralty. Traditionally, an Inupiaq Eskimo village, Barrow has grown in size over the years and is now home for over 4,400 people, with approximately 64% of the population being Alaska Native or part Native. Located on the shores of the Chukchi Sea, Barrow is the economic center of the North Slope Borough. The economy of Barrow is largely dependent upon tax revenues from the North Slope oil fields. 
Many residents are employed by the North Salt Borough and the many businesses that provide support services to oil field operations. Being located on the Chukchi Sea has both its benefits and downfalls. Fish, walrus, seal, birds, and whales are easily accessible to these Anubak people. But at the same time, the fierce winds and pounding waves of the Chukchi Sea take their toll on this coastal community. All these are sandbags from um, last fall. Every fall, all the waves get really big and start taking out the road here and the beach. And they, North Slope Borough put in these sandbags to help the erosion problem that's been going on in Barra for the past, ever since I can remember. There used to be a real big hill right here where I used to go sledding when I was a little kid. And they used to go all the way to the water where the ice is. The beach used to go out about another 50 feet, 75 feet maybe. But every year the waves get really big and take out the roads, start taking out the coastline. And they got to move those houses every, every about eight to 10 years. This road's currently closed, right? Yeah, this road's currently closed, unless you got a good four by. Even with the erosion problem, that is not exclusively here in Barrow, but is also prevalent in many of the coastal villages along the Chukchi and Bering Seas. The people here are able to adapt to the changes that occur in Barrow, including the influx of visitors who come here each year. During the summer, tourism provides a large boost to the economy as sightseers come from thousands of miles to get a taste of life in the far north and catch a glimpse of the midnight sun. In fact, the Anupiat Heritage Center in Barrow offers the experience of a lifetime for hundreds of tourists each year. Inside the center, you will find artifacts that date back as far as 500 A.D., relics that were once tools for everyday life and songs and dances that are still very much a part of the life for these Anupiat people today. songs and dances are stories and lessons that have been passed down from generation to generation and continue to be passed on today. Within the movements of these dances, stories are being told. Some songs tell the lessons learned about sharing and working together. song and dance has a meaning that in one way or another is directly related to the Anubiak way of life. This game right here is called the Nubal of Death. And long ago, especially in the sod homes, we play this game. We would anchor one end of the game onto the floor and touch the other one onto the roof. <laughs> and also long ago, this piece of bone was very small. Also had a very small pinhole. Also, our spears had a very sharp piece of bone ivory. The object of the game is to get your spear into the hole first. At the Anupiat Heritage Center, visitors also learn about different native games like this you one. You guys gotta go again. You gotta make it a little longer than that. <laughs> 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 you got it twice in a row. Again. One more. One more. Again, Bobby. You can do it three times. Bobby. That's <laughs> All visitors can learn about the traditional clothing of the Anupiak people, what kind of animal fur is used, where the animal is hunted, and how the furs are sewn into clothing. It's a brief but informative visit that opens up the eyes of many visiting tourists, giving them a little insight to the power and pride of the Anupiak way of life. Lifelong resident Lloyd Levitt explains. Barrow is a very close-knit community. That much I know about Barrow. I was born and raised right here in Barrow. And a lot of it is 
based on unity when whenever we do our hunting traditions and wherever we go it's based all on unity without unity there we really can't succeed by ourselves that's what I believe in it's a belief that is instilled in the Anupak people from birth, the glue that bonds them together. Traditionally, when a problem or issue would arise within a village, the elders would get together and find a solution to the problem. It is this kind of unity and ability to work together that is still practiced today that deserves a respect of cultures from around the world. I'd like to thank the native village of Barrow for making this program possible, and I'd like to thank you for joining us once again. This program is not finished. Be sure to tune in next week for part two of Whaling in Barrow. I'm Jeannie Green for all of us here. God bless you. Join us again next week for more Heartbeat Alaska. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below.